All right, I guess we're on the air. Are we? You, yeah, you say hi first. I always say hi, hi first. Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Rayo, Fios One News, Lower Hudson Valley. Throwing it over to my partner here. What's your name again? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some nights by this time I've forgotten. Uh, Joe Chaffee, Fios One News, Long Island, and Fios One News, New Jersey. As we uh, uh, watch the next three days play out, I'm trying to... I've been describing Saturday as the better of the two weekend days. Is it? And, and you, well, you're really not getting very much, in my opinion. I also, and, oh, my mother is on. Oh, my God. Is that your mom? Yes. Vivian? Yes. Really? My mother has so many different variations of her name. You don't oh, even really? want to get me started. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> That's great. Of course, she has to watch me on Facebook, because God forbid I should call her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, that's oh. a shocker. Anyway, um, all right. So, okay. what was I saying? Oh, um, I, I I wanted to say because I didn't, we didn't really talk about this. I actually went very aggressive for Sunday temperature wise. I think it may not get out of the forties in you know, a lot of areas. Took, I just took a look at the RPM model, and Joe, believe me, Sunday morning, if you just took a fast glance, you'd swear that the map was for January or February. Well, I've been thinking all along, looking at like, the evolution of Sunday system going by to our south. We hardly see anything like this during the winter months. Of course, you get it now at the end of April. It's like an Alberta clipper that's coming yeah. this way with uh, interacting with a dome of unseasonably chilly air. Yeah, it's gonna, Sunday's going to be a day where I, I'll sh I, I was looking at this. In a I, I will laugh my head off if on Sunday... At least where I live, up in Putnam County, I start seeing wet snow falling. Well, I, look, I wouldn't be shocked if there was some wet snowflakes in the Catskills uh, in elevation uh, right. on I'm Sunday. I'm not quite that high. I'm only 420. Um, now, Monsieur uh, Fitzgerald, our chief meteorologist, uh, lives up in Dutchess County, and he is at an elevation yeah, of 1,000 yeah, feet. Yeah, he's 1,000 he's feet. So he may he's, see he's, some. He's like, it's like being at the top of the Matterhorn up there. <laughs> um, okay, so... And he's dead asleep. He's not hearing a word of this. Uh, <laughs> but you realize every time he goes home, he has to chew gum or else his ears are going to pop. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and the St. Bernards have come to rescue. Right. All right so Neil. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those, All right. Of you, those of you who remember old-time television. <laughs> yes. So I, 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 uh, I got the, the – these are the two-meter temperatures uh, Sunday morning. Okay, so that's the 45-degree line that is – this is Sunday morning, which is not nothing crazy, but it's as the day goes on and we get into the rain, that's when it gets really problematic. I mean, it's got. Wait a minute. Where did my, I'm sorry, this is the GFS. I got the wrong model. What are you using? The, the NAM? I wanted to show you the NAM. The NAM is usually the colder model, so. Well, this is the NAM for during the day on Sunday. So this is 5 o'clock in the afternoon. That's the 45 degree line that's running. Across north, uh, across Central Jersey, somewhere around the Turnpike, yeah. and along the South Shore of Long Island, that's the forty-degree line in northern New Jersey, right. uh, up north and west of Route eighty-four, and that's a thirty-five-degree circle that's sitting somewhere near Monticello. Incredible. And this is at five o'clock in the afternoon. And you know what? At the same time, Joe, uh, it's it's in the low and mid sixties in South Jersey. So the surface low is going to track. Barely to the south of New York City, mm -hmm. but it makes it really tough in a forecast because there's a huge difference between a low that tracks, say, along Route 195 and, and, and down in northern Delaware right. as far as the extent of how chilly it's going to be. Right. So I, I, I went very aggressive. I did yesterday, and I, I, I stayed aggressive with this today. I just may go aggressive tomorrow. I was thinking about going aggressive today, but I said I'll give it one more shot. And after what I've just seen over the last few hours... I'm saying to myself, what, look bit. at that. Uh, yeah. Look at that. That's You're not supposed to see blue when it's almost the month of May. No, you're not. But you know what? It's a, it's a, it's a cold trough. And, and I know it's just, it's really, it's just unfair. We uh, couldn't do this during January or February. No, we, we couldn't. We're doing it almost could at we? the end of April. <laughs> um, it's a, you know, it's a cold upper air trough moving through. I just wanted to take a look at the eight, the uh, five, look at look at the five thousand foot temperatures, the eight fifty zero line. <laughs> I mean, look at that. You know, this is just at, at, at will we tomorrow night five o'clock Sunday afternoon? It's below freezing at five thousand feet across Sussex, Warren, and parts of Passaic County, 
and for Putnam and Duchess and Points yeah. North. And it even yeah. gets down to the city by uh, 8 o'clock at night when the now, precip is long gone. Tomorrow night, are we, going to be, are we going to be speculating on the NAM uh, boundary level temperature? No, <laughs> we're not. Stop. Okay, so um, so here's... Let's back up, because we, uh, we have tonight into tomorrow. And you know, I, thought, I thought that there would be... You know, you got this warm front that's setting up. So it seems to me that it makes sense that tomorrow morning there could be a burst around the morning commute. And I, I said this to you yesterday, and I'm going to hold on to the chance. I think there might be a thunderstorm in there somewhere. Well, the big question is always with warm fronts, uh, the way the models show warm fronts, is they always are over-aggressive, it seems to me. They always try to push the warm air in faster, and we always sit around waiting for the darn thing to move through. So maybe not necessarily, let's say, at the crack of dawn tomorrow, but maybe during sometime during the morning as the front goes by you know, I think that warm fr- I, I think that warm front does get pinched that gets pinched off somewhere in central New Jersey and just south of Long Island and never really gets north of New York it's City it's kind of like it's kind of like a shoehorn you know it's yeah. trying to get your foot in to a, a brand new shoe and then of course comes the cold front tomorrow night with, right uh, it's a surge of uh, Showery and possibly thundery weather. Now the only, the only th- usually the, the the marine layer is is going to shut these thunderstorms down. But the only thing that that I'm a little concerned about is that you, know, you if you look at uh, if you look upstairs, there is a pretty solid looking trough that's swinging through here. So right. what what the marine layer um, tears apart, let's say, as far as tearing apart a thunderstorm as it moves eastward. The uh, upper trough might enhance it a little bit, so right. it may compensate some for the, the um, uh, for the destructive nature of the marine layer. I don't think we're going to see severe weather. Uh, None. The marginal risk goes up to South Jersey. I, I, I they extended this. They added a slight risk from Delaware southward this afternoon. I don't think this is going to be a case where uh, they're going to extend that up further to the north. Now, this is the third thunderstorm threat in the last ten days. Of course. Everybody still, I'm sure, remembers that Sunday night, Monday morning event where we actually had tornado watches posted at, uh, in the wee hours of the morning. Right. That was a significant push. But the, the the one that came later in the week, that was not really all that much to write home about. And this probably won't be that much to write home about in terms of severity. Right. Um, we'll get what we get. And, right. and then Saturday, wind, gusty winds, uh, sun to start, instability, clouds... I suppose you want to throw in a isolated rain shower in the afternoon. Kind of, I, it, it'll almost be the kind of day you would see in the winter time behind a, a a storm going by with some instability clouds and the chance of a snow shower. In this right. case, it would be a rain shower. It'll be in the upper mid and upper fifties, at least in the Hudson Valley on Saturday afternoon. Factor in a wind of thirty miles an hour or more, it probably is going to feel more like the forties. Right. So. And then we come. And then, to of Sunday. course, the Sunday, uh, which which we already talked about. Which, if it winds up, whoever gets into that rain with the northeast wind, those temperatures are going to be down in the forties and, and just sit there. So gonna that is hard. not going to that's going to not not going to be easy. It's now, gonna be here's the thing for next week, and and I, Joe, I hate the spring. I really do. I I just it because because the. And some nice, really warm days are so close geographically, and yet we're going to have to play with um, a frontal boundary pretty much all of next week, going back and forth, up and down. Right. And you know the problem here is okay. Yeah, you've got this ridge that builds in the east, which is fine and dandy, except uh, it you know it, it gets more. It doesn't do you a whole lot of good when it gets warm at the five and ten thousand foot level. Uh, where you've got a ridge, but uh, on, on the on the bottom part of the atmosphere, you're going to be under the influence of a of a cold high in Canada with a shallow area of chilly air that comes down and keeps you in clouds, and you start dealing with warm fronts that try and go by but never make it, or if they make it, then they get sent back the other way. Right. And that's what it is going to be next week. It's differential advection. You've got, as you just pointed out, the upper levels will have west-southwesterly winds, but down at the bottom end of the atmosphere, the where bottom. we are, we're going to have the uh, the east wind or the east-southeasterly wind. Surface high near James Bay yeah. all week. Mm. 
uh, you know, warm already by Monday night. We get a break on Monday in between the Sunday debacle, so we get a break on Monday with some sunshine. And Monday's going to be, you know, still to a little, a little Sunday. cooler from normal anyway. Right. And you set up with an onshore flow and a warm front for Tuesday. Uh, that front sort of vacillates a bit on Wednesday with another wave, another attempt to get a warm front through here with, with an onshore flow. And then that high actually just sits there and builds further south. So the boundary now gets pushed down into Virginia and North Carolina only to come back up on Friday with yet another low. And that's going to we're literally going to have to wait for that one to go by to finally clean house for next I've weekend. Just, I've just come up with a new... I don't know whether or not it's politically correct or not, though. Be very that. careful. Well, you, we, we, we still... Some, <laughs> of us, some of us still refer to Indian summer, a spell of warm temperatures in October, November. Can we classify this as Indian winter? In a well, way? <laughs> this is you, you want to you look at... Um, I, I actually pulled up the teleconnections, and one of the things that I, well, a couple of things. First of all, you talked about what you said before, the differential advection, right? Right. So uh, here we have the Pacific North America Index, which basically measures the strength of the ridge in the uh, west, trough in the east. When it's as negative as it is here, it's exactly the opposite. So you've got that telling you that you have a ridge in the eastern part of the United States. At the same time, you actually have the NAO, which barely went uh, negative through the whole winter at any one point. Starting on Saturday, it stays negative for the next two weeks. <laughs> Weekly negative, so we've got blocking up Weekly there. Weekly negative, you can see, but we have blocking. But it's there, yeah, and it's blocking. It's and then you look at the EPO, and I've always said, especially in the wintertime, uh, if, if you're going to look at any of these indices, it's that East Pacific Oscillation is the one. Uh, in the in the in the snow events that we had, it was the EPO that was always negative, and it's off the wall negative through much of next week, which is going to keep you know the colder height of the north trying to bleed southward. If we had that negative PNA and everything else was neutral, we'd we'd be we'd, we'd probably have some pretty decent weather here in the east, with temperatures in the 70s to near 80 every day. Right. Not going to happen when you have the East Pacific Oscillation screaming a negative number like that, oh. a negative reading like that. That's telling you that cold air is spreading out, particularly in eastern Canada, and it's that's the NAO is helping that part of the equation, and that's all going to bleed down into the east. It's it's so it's, unfair. It, it really is. Well. You couldn't get it in the uh, during the regular winter months, but now you have it as we get. Actually, the midpoint of spring now will be uh, will be coming our way not this weekend but next weekend. Cinco de Mayo, yes, uh, Sunday, a week from Sunday is the midpoint of spring. Believe it or not, and yet it doesn't even seem like we've had real spring around here. Oh no, but it's been real spring because this is really how it's supposed to be. Temperatures have actually been running a little bit above average. Really well for the month of April, running them about two and a half degrees above average. That doesn't do, do any anybody any good this weekend, and especially no. on Sunday. No. So I just wanted to uh, bring this up because uh, <clears throat> there was a working uh, tornado watch. And we still have one up this evening as of 9.35. This is down in the Florida Panhandle, and it includes um, Panama City, Apalachicola, mm -hmm. uh, Tallahassee. Mobile? mobile? Not oh, Mobile. No. Mobile no. is out of it. They were in a, a watch earlier. Right. Um, this is the area that, uh, especially Panama City, that got uh, hit from Hurricane Michael, which uh, last week was upgraded in post analysis to a Category 5, right. which was no big surprise. But I just I was doing this on my YouTube show uh, and uh, on my uh, private platform and uh, anyway I just wanted to show everybody that's where you've got some big thunderstorms today and with respect to the radar at the moment uh, we just freshen it up for you so you know we just it, the, the stuff I think that's down in Virginia here in northeastern Virginia that's probably going to be coming up for the uh, sometime tomorrow morning so that's what you want to watch because that the warm front is is down uh, across southern Virginia at the moment, and then of course you've got the severe weather uh, down in uh, the Florida Panhandle, and your surface low, your low center, is uh, up in uh, somewhere in southern Indiana, if I remember correctly from the surface map. Let me see if we got the zero Z. It might be in, and then again it might not be, but let's see. Nope. Not Darn you, yet. daylight saving time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh, there's your warm front, Joe. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, down 
across southern Virginia, uh, southern Ohio, southern Indiana, low pressure there in uh, in southern Illinois, and uh, that runs up to our west. So uh, the question tomorrow, how far north does that warm front get? We get our showers and storms, and then we uh, have a windy, chilly, in and out, sun kind of day for Saturday. Right. And uh, that, as you just pointed out, the onset is, is probably the better of the two weekend days. Yes. Believe sad, it or not. Sadly. All right. Let's uh, let's say hi to everybody. Uh, let's see who's on tonight, aside from your mom. If by now, she's got to be gone. Uh, I, I can't imagine she would have stayed through for all of that. And she didn't say hi back. <laughs> She'll probably call me on the phone to tell me that she was on. Okay. And that she may, may or may not have heard me. The snow isn't an April Fool's joke, says Jeanette Myers. Well, we didn't say that we specifically were going to see snow on Sunday, but, you know, even, even if we don't get snow on Sunday, Joe... Stepping outside at one point during the day, it's going to smell and feel like it could snow any moment. I Today, think. by the way, because um, uh, Scott Briller, he's not on tonight, but he was on my, on uh, uh, earlier on, on, and he brought up that today is actually the anniversary of the latest Central Park snowfall of three inches, April 25th. Okay. I don't remember what the year was. All right. Well, the latest uh, that snow has ever been sighted at Central Park was, was May back 9th. in 1977. Right, May, on May 9th. On May the 9th. Right. No accumulation there, but uh, it's just the fact. So we're, 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 we're playing around now with those kind of, that kind of situation uh, in the next uh, couple of days. Oh, look, Maria Shriver's watching. Oh, Mar- <laughs> Wait, it's Marie Shriver. I know. Well, you know, she could have misspelled it. <laughs> Jason Schaefer of the, of, the, of the famed beer family. Okay. So uh, one that you'd want to have when you're having, having more, more than, than one, one. Um, and then they changed it. Then they changed Schaefer, Schaefer, Schaefer City. S- Remember that? Right. Yeah. Ha, ha sitting pretty. And then they all ha- Schaefer City. Well, anyway, Schaefer is the one beer to have when you want to have some fun, because they changed it from okay. you know when you're having more, more than, than one, because they didn't want to give anybody the idea that, <clears> have that more we than should one be beer. having more than one. Right. right. Exactly. Not that anybody would, but they do. Um, <laughs> thunderstorms on Long Island. Uh, tomorrow, Karen Rivera asks her dog is terrified. You know, I must have had the only dog that did not only was not afraid of thunderstorms, but he actually would go out in them and try to chase them down. <laughs> I, I, I never quite understood it. I, I, it was sort of like he was saying, you don't belong here, you're in my territory, you need to leave. Get out. Exactly. <laughs> and he would go out, he would go to the door, he would run to the door, and if I opened the door, he would go outside and bark, you know, run toward the lightning. Oh. Get back well, in here. He lasted 14 years, my Cody. Yep. Uh, the snow isn't, isn't an April Fool's joke. No, but, you know, it, it, it's... It, it's upstate and it's in an elevation. It, it, we're not going to see anything. We're not going to see anything down here. Yeah. So <laughs> I have uh, I have to bring my herbs in for Sunday. Hey, by the way, you had the fat lady sing last month. I did. I've been right, haven't I? So far, we haven't seen a flurry since she sang. Well, not a flake. Not a, well, an ice pellet, yes, but not a flake. Well, no accumulating snow. Okay, Is that's that what it was. The, that's what a no accumulating right. snow. Right. Um, uh, she uh, does he have to bring his herbs in? I thought the the herbs herbs and, and lettuce and all they like the cold weather. I thought so in too. In the spring and peas and that's I, what I'd keep it in. What the heck? All right, it's only one one day deal. What what, what, what does Mrs. Rayo say? I don't know. We I'll have, have to, to ask, ask her. her. The, the local Martha Stewart of Putnam Valley. Well, yes, <laughs> and she didn't go to jail. <laughs> 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 Not yet. Um, Mighty cold for uh, late April. That's why they tell you not to plant your vegetables until after Mother's Day. Well, not to plant your tomatoes, anyway. If you put lettuce down, the lettuce loves this. Okay. I, I remember one year, one of the, these colder springs that we've had, um, putting down lettuce really early, and it was it was awesome. I had I had tons of it by the time we by the time we got to May and June. I think there's three days in May. They come consecutive. Sure I am. Who are the three chili saints? Yeah. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> now you know why I don't say them, because I can't, I can't even pronounce them. Well, Mamertus Mimer- 
pa- pan- pancreas. I was going to uh, pancreas and Gervais were the three early Christian saints because their feast days were on May 11th, 12th, and 13th, respectively. They are traditionally cold, and they have become to known uh, be known as the three chilly saints. So there you go. And they're mentioned in the Farmer's Almanac, The too. old Farmer's Almanac. The old Farmer's Almanac, right. I stand. And on Wikipedia, they are called the Ice Saints. Okay, so there you go. Uh, or in some countries, St. Myrtus M- is actually St. Boniface of Tarsus. St. Pancreas is... And St. Ser- Servatius in Australia. Belgian... Austrian. Austrian. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. It's It's late. Uh, uh, Austrian, uh, Belgian, Croatian, Czech, Dutch, French, German, Hungarian, North Italian, Polish, Slovene, and Swiss folklore. They are so named because their feast days fall on the days of May 11th, 12th, and 13th, respectively. No, known as the Black Thorn Winter. So there you go, folks. Don't plant anything until after the three chili saints say the last day is May 13th. Oh, but look, in 1582, the replacement of the Julian calendar by the Gregorian calendar involved omitting, omitting 10 days in the calendar. So if folklore predates the calendar change, then the equivalent dates would actually be May 22nd through the 25th. So don't plan anything after May 20, until May 25th. That's that's Memorial Day. Well, the Memorial Day. Or it could be. It could be. Now Saint Memeritus is not counted amongst the ice saints in, in certain countries like southern Germany, Austria, northern Italy, Italy the Czech Republic, where uh, etc. Whereas Saint Boniface of Tarsus belongs to them in other countries: Flanders, Liguria, Czech Republic, etc. I don't understand any of that. No. I don't and then either. they talk about Saint Sophia now all of a sudden. Was nicknamed Cold Sophia in Germany. In Germany, in German, Katie Sophia, Katie so- Sophie, on May fifteenth can be added. In Germany, Alsace, France, and Poland. Where else can you get this? Why did you bring this up? <laughs> Why I ask you? As our audience just dwindles away. <laughs> and speaking of dwindling away, we should dwindle away. All right. So. Uh, Tune in tomorrow, folks, at <clears throat> same bat time, and we'll probably be doing a recap of these thunderstorms going through, and we'll go over what we uh, expect for the weekend. Uh, and uh, and if there's any winter storm else? watchers or advisories posted for tomorrow sure. for this weekend, we'll be the first to tell you tomorrow night. Right. Uh, Brian Fitzgerald will be uh, on tomorrow morning. Fire Swan News, Long Island, New Jersey, and Hudson Valley. And Brittany Borer and Addison Green for all of you lucky. Verizon subscribers, you can watch them during the midday and afternoon, and then we will be back. We'll be back tomorrow night. Good night, everybody. Good night.